Hey guys, and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory, we're going to be talking about polar or grid navigation. So first, let's talk a little bit about the problems of navigating around the poles. So we have two big problems. One, that true track is never constant because of the convergency. If you want to know more about convergency, I've covered it in another of my videos. And variation changes very rapidly close to the poles. So because of all these problems, we need to find an alternate method of navigating close to the poles. And this alternate method is called grid navigation. Now grid navigation is essentially just laying a grid over an area close to the poles. And what this gives us is a grid north. Now that grid north is what we align our gyroscope to. So we would essentially have a heading indicator and instead of aligning that with the compass, we would align that with grid north. This is only really an exercise for your ATPL exams. In real life, of course, if you were navigating in the poles, you would use RNAV, GPS, uh, a more modern type of navigation. However, uh, in the old days, this is how they would have done it. Now, let's go over a few bits of terminology. The data meridian is the meridian which lines up with grid north. In this case, I've drawn a line just here. We could call it the Greenwich meridian, zero. And I've aligned my grid north with that meridian. If this was the North Pole, as we come around here, the meridians would be a constantly changing angle. So whichever grid north lines up with, that is called the datum meridian. And that's important to work out convergency, which I'll talk about in a minute. Reference datum doesn't necessarily have to be the Greenwich one. You could have a chart that the reference datum states that it's from 20 east. So how would that work? Well, if this was zero, the Greenwich meridian, 20 east would be 20 degrees towards the right. So that whole grid north would be shifted 20 degrees left in this case, and grid north would become up there. For simplicity today, I'm just going to line up grid north with the Greenwich Meridian. So of course, as we're navigating, there's going to be a difference between our true track and our grid track. Our grid track, of course, we take from reference grid north, and our true track we will take from our true north, which will be varying depending where we are. If we navigated this way, we would be on a constant grid track. However, our true track would be constantly changing as north would be, if we were flying this sort of direction, north would be leaning left. Now the difference between true track and grid track is called the grid convergence. And that is equal to the difference between the datum and the local meridian. And the local meridian is the meridian where we are at or where the measurement is being taken from. Calculating the grid convergency will give us the difference between our true track and our grid track, and we can use that to go from one to the other. Convergency can be east or west, so in this case I've drawn a very simple example, grid north is pointing out this way, and of course uh, true north will always be pointing towards the center as we go around the globe here. So if true north is to the right of grid north, you could have an easterly convergence, and if true north is to the west, then we have a westerly convergence. Now when it comes to questions, doing questions in the exam, I always draw a little sketch and it's simply done. You're always given a parallel of latitude of some sort, which you can just, you always draw the same drawing, North Pole or South Pole, draw a circle and that circle now becomes your parallel of latitude, i.e. 80 North, 75 North, it doesn't matter. So let's move on to an example. Now this is the Northern Hemisphere. It works exactly the same for the Southern Hemisphere. I've drawn the North Pole in the center and a circle, in this case, I've called it 80 North. This is the parallel 80 North and the North Pole in the center there. Now, in our first example, I've said our aircraft is at 80 North and 100 West. So that being the Greenwich, Greenwich Meridian right there, zero. I've gone 100 degrees West, 90 degrees and 100 degrees. And that's 80 North and 100 degrees West. That is the position of the aircraft. Now the examples can give you grid track, can give you true track, it doesn't matter. As long as you understand what I'm about to explain, you will be able to decipher any questions. Now let's say the aircraft is following a grid track of 0, 4, 5. So that's my line there. Now, first of all, I would draw on a cross parallel to the grid track, parallel to the datum meridian. So in this case, I'm going to assume it's the Greenwich meridian. Again, you know, if you had if you knew it was 20 east, like in my example before, then the grid track would be slightly shifted to the left. Whichever the grid track is, you draw your line parallel to that, and that faces grid north. So in black, I've drawn my grid, and in blue, I've drawn my true bearings. So parallel to my datum meridian there, 
I've drawn a line, 360 at the top, south, east and west. So any angle relating to that would be a grid track. Now I'm going to draw my true track. True track is easy because I just draw a straight line from the point where I am to the North Pole and that will give me 360. So I have North, East, South and West in blue. That would be true track. We're flying a heading of 045 grid. So I can draw that on there as well. 045 from grid North. It's very clear when you draw this and I recommend you do so in your exam questions. As you can see here, my grid is 045, my grid track. What will my true track be? If I now pay attention to the blue compass rose there, I can see that my true track is going to be somewhere past 270, which is here. So it looks like about 20, 30 degrees, probably around the 300 mark. In a lot of questions, you would be able to decipher the answer to the question just by doing that without any calculations. If you draw that, you can see that the answer is going to be somewhere between 360 and 270. In most cases, you could then look at the answers on your questions and literally pick the closest answer and that will be that question done. However, to calculate it properly, we need to calculate our conversions, our grid conversions, which we talked about earlier. Our data meridian is the Greenwich meridian, so zero, nice and easy to calculate here. And we know our local meridian is 100 west. So there's a difference there of 100. All you need to do is calculate the difference between the data meridian and the current meridian. So in this case, we've got 100 degrees. So that is our grid convergency, 100 degrees. So if we know our grid heading is 045 grid, we know there's going to be 100 degrees difference between the grid and the true. It works the same the other way around as well. If we know the true and we want to calculate the grid, convergence is still 100 degrees, so there's 100 degree difference. Now the easiest way to do this is to add it and subtract it to the number you've got. So in this case, 45 degrees, which we have, plus or minus 100 will give us 145, or 310. Now by looking at the diagram we've drawn here, we can see that 145 true would be somewhere over here. So that's not going to be it. We know it's somewhere between 360 and 270, so it's bound to be 310. Like I said before, you can pretty much get that from just visually looking at it. We said 300 before, we've calculated it at 310. Now if you understand that little sketch there, and how it's worked out, you will be able to answer any questions on polar or grid navigation. Another little thing I'd like to add, some questions will give you two points or a straight line between two points on the same parallel. I've kept my parallel of 80 north here and we've drawn two points between 30 west and 120 east up there. Again, the data meridian for this example is the greenish meridian, but if it wasn't, you could just draw that datum in, whichever angle it may be. Now, it will ask you questions along the lines of what would be your true track or what would be your grid track along that path. So the grid track, of course, is gonna be constant, the true track is not. Now, how can you work out this? Well, you need to work out the conversion. How can we do this? If we draw a line cutting that track at 90 degrees to the North Pole, we know that at that point there, we are going to be heading 090, that would be true track of 090 as the pole will be directly to our left and all we would have to do then is draw the line similar to here calculate the angles find the conversion convert that track to a grid track or again you can just do it by eye i've drawn again in black my grid so i've drawn a north pattern there aligned with my grid which is the greenwich meridian in this example and i can see there just by the drawing that even though my true track is going to be 090 my grid track is going to be somewhere closer to 045, and that would be a constant grid track all the way up there. So close to 045, you'll probably find an answer very close to that in the example. If not, you could just calculate the convergency by knowing what that angle is, getting the difference between the data meridian and working out what your difference is. Now these exercises, we've just been talking about converting between grid and true. However, if we want a magnetic heading, we also want to take into account the variation. To convert between true and magnetic, I've covered this topic in another video. However, gravation is just equal to the convergency plus the variation, and it's just one mathematical number. What this allows us to do is go from grid north straight to magnetic north. Just with the conversion angle, we would only be able to get to true heading and then apply the magnetic variation at that point, which we would be given, and then we could get to the magnetic heading. So I hope this has helped, guys. Really. Just remember, draw your examples out very quickly in a sketch. Try and be relatively accurate when you're drawing your angles and you should easily be able to decipher what answer is going to be. Well guys, if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. All the best, till next time.